Hello, how are you? Welcome to my channel. This is Pranav from DPS Diary. Uh, in previous video, we talked about uh, SQL Server DBA questions and their in, uh, and their answers. Okay, and uh, today we'll talk about same questions but for Cybase DBA, Cybase AIC DBA. Okay, so we'll have 15 questions along with answers, and also I will try to show you in in terms of lab also. And then uh, at the end, we'll have a you know, bonus question like we did in the SQL Server part, okay? So before we start, I would like to thank you for watching my video. And if you do so, if you like them, then please like. And for any feedback or anything that you want me to cover, please comment there. And also if you can subscribe, that would be really good. You can also uh, uh, notify yourself if you, if you click on the red uh, no, bell icon. So that would be really good. Okay, so thank you. And let's start. Right. So 50 interview questions with answer for Sybase AAC DBA. Okay. So the first question is how to speed up database backup process? Please suggest three options. So before we start answering this question just think that database backup is something which is a must to do job for any dba you have to take database backup on periodic basis either it could be daily or it could be weekly i don't know based on your uh, no, uh, like business agreement what is your rpo what is your rto i will not go into rpo and rto in this video but based on that you need to decide how frequent you should take the database backup so if your backup is taking too long Okay, irrespective of size of database, I mean, suppose it is taking for hours and hours, so that is not something good. We should uh, try something uh, as a DBA to speed up that uh, speed up the backup process, right? So this is the question. So what all things that you would like to do when you have to expedite the backup, right? Okay. So first answer that I would look for from a candidate who is who is uh, you no. Know, uh, appearing for database interview as a DBA. First thing that should be there as compress. Okay, so you should compress your backup that will reduce the size of backup and also would uh, speed up the backup process, the dump process. This is the first thing, right? Second thing, second thing I would expect as a stripe. So stripe is very, very important. Actually, it is more important than compress. Stripe will help you in using more number of CPU cores or threads on a server. So if you have 16 cores of server and if you are not using Stripe, so basically you are running a single threaded. If you specify Stripe of 8 or 10 or 12 based on the you know, uh, size of database, this will split your job into 8 parts and all of them will run parallelly. So with the Stripe, you will have that many files as a backup. So if you use eight stripes, so you will have backup underscore one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, up to eight. If you use 10, so it will be up to 10. So all of them will be running parallel. So this is second option. Now third option I would look for, I mean, this is not something very common, but if, if I get this answer, it's very good. Shared memory. When you have backup configuration file, backup when you have uh, run service now in that you can specify shared memory minus small m if you do so then you allocate more memory to the backup process right so these three if you are able to answer this is really very good that means you have good uh, you, you have depth of knowledge in cybase asc as a dba okay so this was the first question now let's go to the second question Okay, so this is again to do with the backup because backup restoration is the basic you know, building block or basic part of uh, job of DBA. If you don't know this, then I mean, it's very difficult to manage database. Then your job will be at risk all the time. If something goes wrong and you do not have the backup or you have not uh, you know, specified your RPO and RTO with business, then your job could be in trouble at any point of time. So this should be the very first thing that you should do when you join an organization. Okay, so the question is, how many types of backups are there and what are the prerequisites for them? Okay, 
so there are three types of backup one is full which is applicable to all databases okay there is no prerequisite you can perform backup full backup of any database without having any db option enabled or anything like that right second option is cumulative backup okay cumulative backup is something when when you perform that so all the changes which has been done after full backup will be there as a cumulative backup so you can specify multiple uh, times this backup suppose you have a full backup at 12 am and then at 4 am you take cumulative backup then you take 8 a, uh, 8 am then you take 12 pm so the backup which was done at 12 pm will actually contain everything all the changes post 12 am full backup but if you take the full backup again then the flag will be reset and then next cumulative backup will contain only the change which was done after full backup not the previous full backup so this you have to keep in mind this is second type of backup then third backup is tran backup okay which is log backup so tran backup gives you facility of restoring database with a point in time recovery as we uh, know saw previously rpo and rto so this will help you in uh, in performing rto okay so now what are the prerequisites so prerequisite for the for the cumulative backup is you need to have db option enabled there is a option for cumulative backup that needs to be enabled if you don't do that then you will not be able to perform cumulative backup and once you do that change cumulative backup db option immediately after that you can perform cumulative backup you need to have a full backup first then you can perform cumulative backup because if you enable the option and you start uh, directly cumulative backup it will not have anything to link back because as i said earlier cumulative backup checks the last full backup okay so if you have not performed then it, it doesn't know where to go back so first thing after doing that change is perform full backup and then take cumulative backup right then trunk backup so trunk backup the prerequisite is there is an option which is trunk log on checkpoint so that should be disabled if that is not disabled then uh, on every checkpoint the log will be truncated so that way you will not be able to perform log, uh, log backup or trunk backup so these two are the additional additional types of backup other than full backup and they are the prerequisite as i explained so if you are able to explain this much this is very very good and that will uh, show that yes you have good knowledge about backup and different types of backup and how do you do that i have covered this in my post you can you can go through that okay third question how to find access level for a user or user object now you know user is different user object is different right so for finding that actually i have covered this in my post there is a simple and straight away single command which is sp underscore help protect with one p I have already showed that in my previous uh, video and there is a post also that I have covered. So let me show you sp underscore help protect. Okay. If you specify test table A, okay, this will give all the permission level. There is no permission that I have granted here. So there is nothing coming. Otherwise you can say that. Okay. So I have covered this on my post. So you can, you can go through that. Okay. So we went up to third question now this is good question okay i really expect answer who has uh, managed the users and logins if somebody has done that they will certainly be knowing this okay if, if you have not done that then there might be some uh, misunderstanding or you would think that sa role can do everything so in cyber sac it's not like that so the question is what is the difference between sa role and sso role okay so sa is system admin as you know sso is cybase security officer cybase actually handles it very well okay so in cybase if you are having sa role that doesn't mean that you can handle the user uh, permission also so there is separate role for that if you have sa role and if you want to add login you want to change anything with the login the access and other thing then you you also need to have sso role so SSO role is to do everything for the permission. Okay. But SA role can do anything other than that. 
So if you don't have a sensor rule, you cannot do that. Okay, so give few examples of SA, uh, SA rule cannot do and SSO rule can do. So this I have already covered. So anything to do with the permissions of logins or users, you need to have SSO rule. You cannot perform those things with the SA rule alone. And you don't need to have SA rule. You can perform everything with SSO rule only. Right? This is to grant uh, you know, this permission to a separate department that could be risk department or infosec department or some other department who looks after your uh, permissions. Right? Difference between login, user and areas. Actually, I have covered that. So login is a database instance level. Right? Instance means a complete thing. There are all databases in, uh, in that instance okay user user is a database level and uh, you can map login and user so you can have same login and you can create a new user or you can add that user add that login as a user in the database in the user database okay then there is something called alias alias is actually this is uh, you can use different login for a user that that login or that user is already existing actually alias is mostly used when you want to add some login as an alias to the database so uh, alias of dbo so that means it will have all the permissions similar to database owner okay now to understand again login is a database instance level user and alias is at database level it's not at the instance level right okay so this was sixth question now uh, explain about user defined roles and usage this actually we have covered in one post so you can go through that and this is also to do with the sp underscore help product how to list them now how to how can you create user defined roles based on read permission based on write permission based on execute permission based on departments all that actually i have covered in my uh, one of the video and also I have covered them in post. So you can go through them and you can understand this. This is also very important when you are a DBA and who looks after the permissions, okay, who creates a login and who maintains the permissions and all. So this is good for them. Okay, now this is something which is a typical command, typical question. And uh, this generally you will face it once in a while. Okay, especially after the server is rebooted for some reason or service is rebooted. Okay, and since you are as DBA, you are not sysadmin. So that uh, server reboot and server uh, start and all will not be looked after you. So once you do that, then this kind of issues really uh, occur. So what would be the answer of this? So you issue a backup command of database, but nothing happens. You don't see any file there on the on the on the directory or you don't see anything in the error log in the backup error log okay so what you should do is you should check whether backup service is running or not mostly database backup service is not running that is the thing that you should start looking at how can you do, how can you do that we have another question okay so command to check whether sybase ac service is up and running or not on unix server so there are multiple commands, multiple ways to check. Okay, how I do that is uh, show server. Okay, show server. That's the one command. You can also do ps minus ef and uh, you know pipeline grep. You can do sybase or the name of your uh, you know the instance. You can you can also do that. And there are other ways also. You can see whether the error log uh, that is being updated or no. So even that way you can check, right? So this was ninth question. Now 10th question. This is something when you have a busy environment, okay? And then you have all this backup configured for point in time recovery and for RPO, okay? So you notice that the tran backup is on increasing path. It's not reducing at all. I mean, you issue multiple, you know, tram backups. Suppose you issue like every 15 minutes, 
and you see at 10 a.m. it was like 100 MB. Now 10, 15 a.m. it is 105 MB. Then 10, 30, you see 120 MB. So it keeps on increasing with every hour or with every, uh, every time the backup runs. It's not stabilized or it's not reducing in terms of size. Actually, the fan backup is something which should not be on increasing path it, because it contains only that change which is done after the last transactional backup. Okay. So what are the things that you should check? This is an important question. And this will really show what kind of troubleshooting you have done in your environment. How I would approach this one is, I will go and check the open transaction. There is possibility you have a transaction which has been running from hours and that has not been committed or it has not been rolled back. That is the reason your transaction log is not reduced. Okay. How do you find wait events and uh, we, how do you know which one is maxed at your server? So for this, I will actually show you what are the commands you can see. So you can go and check, but for this MDA should be enabled. Okay, MDA table should be enabled, monitoring should be enabled. So mon process waits is the one that will show you the wait event ID, waits and wait time. And you can see what is your SP ID. You can filter it based on your SP ID at that point of time. And then you could be able to know. Now, in case you want to know what are the wait event IDs and how to find whether it is for the waiting call network sent to complete or for caching issues or something like that. So you can go to this table, mon wait event info, and you would be able to find all of them. All of them are listed here, right? Okay, the other thing that you can do is mon sys weights. Okay, so this will also give you similar input what we saw in the mon process weights. Okay, but this is mon sys weights, and here the time is in seconds. The previous one is in millisecond. That's the difference. Okay, so this is about wait, uh, wait event. So actually, you can uh, export the output into Excel and you can find what is the max one and you will be able to know what is your weight, uh, the maximum weight events on your server. This is one way. You can also find the same uh, similar information if you are running Sysmon, SP underscore Sysmon for three minutes or for five minutes. Okay, so even that way you will be able to know what is your uh, server waiting on, what is the maximum wait time which is hurting your server, right? Okay, how to find when your Cybase service was last started? There are multiple ways that you can find that out. Okay, so let's see a few of the ways that we can find that. So one of the way is select at at boot time. This way will give you when was it uh, started. So it is third October two thousand twenty one. This is one. Now second thing I can do is sp underscore help db and temp db because whenever you start your sideways, the temp db will be recreated, right? So this way you can also find it here. You can see October 3, 2021. This is the second way. Third way is if you run Sysmon for a period period of uh, minutes or second, in the output of Sysmon, you would be able to see when the server was restarted. This is third. Fourth way, I would say you can check the error log, Sybase error log. There also you would be able to find this information. So these are the four common ways. If you know some more ways, please let me know in comments. Okay, this would be really good to see. How to check cache configuration of your server? This is something, if you have done the cache configuration, if you have uh, if you have done binding of some table, which is very critical and used in end of day or keeps on being used. So if you want to use, keep that, that in the cache, then you have to do all the configuration. Okay, so how to check that, okay? There are a few commands that I would prefer. Okay, so first is sp underscore help cache. This will give you some information about the caching. Okay. Then I will also do sp underscore uh, cache config. Then I will also do uh, for the thread, help thread. Okay, these three command mostly I use for cache and for thread. So thread, I've already showed you how to check the thread configuration. Okay. Now, 
list few maintenance jobs where downtime is not required and others where it is required so maintenance job updating statistics is something which doesn't require downtime this is a online job it can be done okay uh, reorg there are many options in reorg reorg rebuild is the one which requires downtime downtime in the sense the table will be locked okay and you cannot update or insert or delete uh, in that table but then again it is based on segment but overall you can say if you are doing that and if it is a bank or critical system then you will have lock your compact does not require uh, uh, what you call downtime okay it is online process you can perform any operation while that is running reorg defrag you can do there are many command to do with the reorg where it is online process except reorg rebuild and there are few other okay updating stats is something that doesn't require uh, downtime so they, so these were 15 question that we covered for uh, dba interview now there is a bonus question so this is how to transfer logins from primary to secondary server so if you are setting up the replication or you are having msa setup multiple subscribing agent okay so that time you need to sync the login so that your replication does not fail for access okay so how do you do that so how it can be done is you have master Uh, dot sys logins right so sys login you copy them bcp them into another table temp db something uh, where login is not equal to sa and some login which is already there which comes with system like login pro or something like based on how you have installed in, into your environment and then from there bcp out and on secondary server server you do bcp in this has to do with the logins you can similarly do for the roles uh server roles and sys roles if you have defined user defined roles and if you want to change sys roles also similar to what you have done on the primary so be so similar to that you can do and then bcp out and bcp in you can do okay so this was about all so i hope you like these questions and uh, you like the answers also i will prepare a ebook for all these questions and answer and i would uh, keep it on my post and also i will give link here if you want to buy them it will be on a nominal charge all right so you can download them and you can use it for your preparation for cybase as a interview for dba interview okay so thank you for watching have a really great day nice day wonderful day and uh, as i requested earlier if you like this one or if you liked my other videos and if you want me to continue doing so please like comment and subscribe to my channel thank you again for watching have a wonderful